Hi guys, welcome back. So today I thought I would do another mysterious disappearance video. But anyway, let's get right into it. So James Kimball, but known as Jim, grew up in Oak Park, Illinois. Now Jim was one of six children, so he, he was from quite a large family. And Jim was described growing up as quite shy. Jim seemed like a normal kid growing up. Like his parents, siblings didn't think anything was out of the ordinary or that anything was wrong with him. He just seemed like a genuine normal kid. Unfortunately for Jim and his family, on August 16th, 1982, Jim's father died of a sudden heart attack. Jim was only 13 years old at the time of his father's death. But when this happened, his family realised that Jim's emotions weren't what they thought they would be. He wasn't expressing sadness or how the sort of emotions his family thought they would see him go through for just losing his father. He just kept quiet and shy and to himself and didn't really show any emotion to the situation. His family thought that he was just hiding his emotions, that he didn't want to express how he was feeling. So they didn't think much of it. Fast forward to three years later in 1985, Jim was in a like a little garage band with his brothers and Jim played the drums in the band. But one of the days while they were practicing, Jim just suddenly stopped playing, just out of nowhere, just sort of froze. His brothers then asked like, what's wrong, are you okay? He then angrily threw his drumstick and then just sat on the ground. His brothers were quite concerned for him and his entire family at this point got really concerned for Jim. So they decided the best thing to do was to take him to hospital to get him checked out and for him to speak to somebody. Jim then met with a psychiatrist and the psychiatrist diagnosed him with schizoaffective disorder. Now, schizoaffective disorder is a mental disorder where you can get symptoms very similar to schizophrenia, like hallucinations, and delusions, and they can hear voices. Some more symptoms of this is also depression and mania, so feeling very, very depressed, and then one moment feeling very high and happy and positive. And when the psychiatrist was talking to him and asking him why he felt angry, Jim then responded to, he was angry about his father's death and he was hearing voices in his head. Jim was then prescribed with medication, but over the next eight years, he would relapse and he would be in and out of the hospital. In this time though, he did still finish high school and he still held down a couple of jobs as well. He then moved out of his mother's house and the family home into a halfway house about 10 miles away from where his mother and his family home was. Now fast forward to Easter weekend in 1993, Jim showed up at his mother's house quite earlier than she was expecting him to, but nothing seemed out of the ordinary. Jim seemed fine in himself, nothing seemed unusual about him. But then the next day, the family had a new stereo system and Jim couldn't quite get his head around it and that this made him extremely angry because it made him angry and irritable he decided it was best to go for a walk just to clear his head. His brother did try to calm him down but couldn't so then they did come to the conclusion that him just going out for a walk, clear his head, he should feel fine and come back later on. Unfortunately for Jim's family, Jim never returned back to his mother's house. So his family went out searching for him but they didn't get any luck, they couldn't locate him anywhere. This went on for 11 months, where the family and the police were searching everywhere for him, putting up flyers, um, just seeing if anybody had seen him, but nothing came of it. He was nowhere to be found. After several years of Jim's disappearance and nobody knowing where he is or not really having any sightings of him, an officer came across a hitchhiker, but the man that they saw seemed drunk. But after the police officer gave him a breathalyzer to check how much alcohol he'd actually had, it turns out that this man didn't have any alcohol, like he wasn't drinking. So the police just let him go and let him go on his way, which is quite odd because if somebody's acting like they are intoxicated or just not 
acting normal in general and they are outside on their own with nobody with them, you would think they would question this and wonder if it was somebody who wasn't mentally stable. And I always believe that people with mental health issues just don't get taken seriously a lot of the time. And it's really frustrating because things like this might not happen or things like this might get resolved if mental health was taken more seriously. But because the man was clearly not intoxicated, they just let him go. After about a month's passing of the encounter the police had with this man, they then saw a missing persons poster and realised that they thought it was Jim. But because so much time had passed since then, but they were unable to locate his whereabouts again to see if it actually was Jim. And this is where I come back to taking mental health seriously. Like, they pulled him over because they thought, they checked him out because they thought he was intoxicated. If you think somebody's intoxicated, they're acting not normal. So if you find out they're not intoxicated, you would think to do some more checks or to ask for ID or to ask where he was going or where he wanted to go to, but none of this happened. He was just released and let go. Now his family believe that because he's not on his medication, he might be delusional. He might not know who he is, where he is or how to get home. So he needs help, but there's nobody there to help him. So if the police had looked into this further or realized this sooner, Jim might've been reunited with his family, but it might not have been Jim. It could have been somebody that looked like him. But I feel like the reason the police didn't realize he was a missing person is because it was 90 miles away from where Jim was last seen and where he lived. Unfortunately, to this day, Jim is still missing. His last known possible sighting was the police officers who believes it was Jim, and this was in Indiana. Jim's family are still hoping that he does return one day, but I personally believe that because he's not on his medication, he's unable to find his way home or know what he did or know who he is or maybe he hit his head on the walk and doesn't remember his life. I still believe Jim is alive and out there and it would be great if one day he could get reunited with his family so they just know that he's safe. Imagine 27 years of just wondering where your son is, where your brother is, and it's just 27 years of missed time with a loved one. Well, anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. If you do like videos like this, then please hit the subscribe button as I will be uploading twice a week. I do True Mud Tuesdays and Spooky Saturdays, but I will be inserting these sorts of videos in in between as well. Thank you so much again for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Bye!